in the last few weeks, and some of us were actually there when this was uh, in Pakistan when this was starting, we've heard a stream of dire reporting from Pakistan and statements from administration officials regarding the situation in Pakistan. It is unquestionably a critical one. I'm aware that the main institution in Pakistan, the military, remains intact and that there are concerns among the Pakistani press that the U.S. is lending an air of panic to the situation. Talk to us for a moment about how critical the threat is and what efforts we are undertaking to communicate U.S. intentions to address the threat directly to the Pakistani people. Uh, you know, the relationship between the United States and Pakistan, which goes back to the birth of Pakistan as an independent nation, is a complicated relationship between allies who have often misunderstood each other. I, I make that comment when I hear you refer to, the, when you use the phrase, U.S. lending an air of panic or contributing to an air of panic about the situation. According to the Pakistani press. Yes, and if, you know, to the, so what's actually, ha we had a kind of an echo chamber situation. If you analyze it, and it's worth looking at for a minute, we, we spent a lot of time on this, Mr. Chairman. We've had extensive meetings in the State Department, the White House, trying to make sure that people understand exactly what we're saying. There ex when SWAT fell and the deal was, was made, the concern that was expressed was not initially in the United States. It was among the people of Peshawar and Lahore and Islamabad who understandably felt threatened. SWAT is not just another location. It is a critic. It is a very symbolic location. It's not part of the tribal areas. It is a vacation place. I like to point out to my New York friends that it's the same distance from Manhattan as East Hampton is from New York, and it bears the same psychological relationship to the people of Islamabad as a vacation spot, although real estate prices were not quite as high. And uh, the um, the and we won't talk about the parties. No, please. The um, but all all joking aside, the fall of SWAT created an air of panic, not in the United States initially, but among certain people in Pakistan, even in India. I found people who recalled their vacations in SWAT and were stunned by its fall. That then came back to the United States. People going out to Pakistan, including members of the Congress, came back and made strong statements. Private citizens made strong statements. One very well-known counterinsurgency expert, not a member of the U.S. government, not a consultant, said they had a matter of months before they might hit, hit the wall. And this began to create a ricochet effect. And so without anyone intending it, honest, well-intentioned statements of concern became interpreted as predictions. It was by the, pr and the press magnified this. I'm not actually blaming anyone. I'm not blaming the people who made the statements. They were pro-Pakistan. I'm not blaming the press. They were reporting them. But it really took off as a story. And, it's, and in that atmosphere, President Sadari arrived in town yesterday. And he raised this issue with me immediately. And let me say frankly uh, uh, to you, I, I understand his concern. And uh, we all understand it. So with your permission, Mr. Chairman, let me make very, very clear why he's here and what our goals are in Pakistan so that we can try to dispel a self-fulfilling sense of what uh, Congressman Ackerman called the pants on fire syndrome. Now, he said the pants really are on fire, and I understand exactly what he said, but I also think it needs to be put in the perspective of what we're trying to achieve. I would submit to you that Pakistan's, that Pakistan of such is of immense importance to the United States strategically and politically, that 
our goal must be unambiguously to support and help stabilize a democratic Pakistan headed, headed by its elected president, Asif Ali Zadari. Uh, I read in the newspapers that the administration is distancing itself from President Zadari in favor of his leading political opponent, Nawaz Sharif in the Punjab. That's simply not true. We have not distanced ourselves from President Zadari. If we were, why would President Obama have invited him to Washington today? Why would we be here today talking about additional money for his government? However, we do have relations with Nawaz Sharif and his brother, who's the chief minister of the Punjab, just the way we have relations with, let's say, David Cameron, the, the leader of the opposition in Great Britain. This is the, 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 the point that needs to be underscored here is that we have the highest strategic interests in supporting this government. That's what H.R. 1886 is about, and that is, why, that is what our administration is trying to do. And we should not allow comments about, the, about how serious the, the issue is to be confused with predictions of a collapse. We do not think Pakistan is a failed state. We think it's a state under extreme test from the enemies who are also our enemies. And, and we have, Mr. Chairman, the same common enemy, the United States and Pakistan.